You guys can be a little more inventive with your cameras next time, okay? <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see what, what do you got. What should we do? It, it's, it's certainly trying to... Okay. Ready? Yep. Not bad. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> fish. All right. This is the fun of video stores. So this is the American side. How many titles do they have? I think like... Uh, about about uh, 35,000. Wow. <laughs> so behind you there is some titles. We could start with Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> to me is one of the great, greatest movie scenes done. It just, it's just in terms of the sheer intensity and just graphicness and and reality. Mm. Um, very effective. Um, I'm friends with Steven and it's a, my producer who I work with all the time, he did this. And it was interesting how Steven came to the set. He didn't want to really, I think he scouted once mm. and he never went back. And uh, uh, he didn't want to know Usually a director gets there right before a shoot. I think he literally got there the day before or whatever. And he says, I just want to start discovering and feeling what would, what it would be like to go on in a boat. Okay. You know? And, uh, you know, I, I was young when I heard that story and I'm like, wow, it's crazy. But, you know, as you get more familiar being a director, you're able to, uh, like I could literally almost take a picture of this store and like know how I'm going to shoot it from LA. And uh, then you discover shots when you're there. And so, okay. so directors who've been doing this a lot, and fast shot makers like Steven is, I am, um, uh, you can do that. I think for a new director, it would be very difficult. And in which way, Shining has influenced you as a director? Well, I remember I was a kid sitting in one of the great uh, movie cinema. It's, one, it's, it's the Fox Theater in Westwood. Mm -hmm. And it's 1,200 seat house, two, two balcony, massive, massive room. And I remember it was on a weekday, almost empty theater, and I sat there near the front row. It scared the fuck out of me. Can you say that word on yes. the show? Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, when I saw those twins, I'm getting the chills right now. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is a scene of the corridor. The corridor. Oh my god. I'm getting the chills like been telling you that because it's just that's how much this movie affected me. Come and play with us, Danny. You know, simple plan. Okay. It was their it was their student film they did. Okay. Uh, uh, it was one of their first movies, um, and I just their style was interesting. And then where I really like discovered them was uh, was raising Arizona. They were a big influence in my life because I, I started directing when I was 21. Yeah, and I uh, started doing music videos like two weeks out of film school. I got very lucky. Um, and then I got into commercials. And there was a reason why I, w I wanted to go to videos. We, always, we were doing a, like a video. I was at a company with Fincher and Dominic Senna and um, people joined us later like Fuqua and Spike Jones, Mark Romanek. Um, but literally I'm 21, 22, 22. Uh, I went to this company and then we got into commercials. Mm -hmm. And it was all about stepping stones going, getting into movies. I've always wanted to get into movies. Uh, and I sort of took some of their style of how they use camera work, funny. Uh, when you do, do commercials, they say you can either do, only do fashion, you can only do action, you can only do uh, 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 products. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Or you can only do sports. And I'm like, I want to do it all because I'm going to be a movie director and I need to know it all. And they go, well, you can't do that. I said, well, I'm going to do that. So where I started making my mark uh, I did a lot of these commercials that became very famous. I just did this very famous commercial that won the gold, Grand Gold Lion, whatever, in yeah. Cannes. Um, uh, it was for the best commercial in the world that year. It was for the Got Milk. Yeah. And that was the Vienna Wood Dance in D, one of my all-time favorites. And now let's make that random call with today's $10,000 question. It's a tough one. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? 
and it was sort of a style that they had but I was, I was using a little more extreme camera work. So, and it was just uh, using snorkel cameras, which is a special type of lens system and different things. And uh, um, it was, you know, in commercials, it's like people that would do funny, they shoot bad. People that do sports could do cool stuff, but they're not funny. Mm. And I was trying to mix them both. It's cool shooting with funny. So that's how I made my mark in the commercial world. That's how I got my first movie, Bad Boys. Get out of the car, man. The fuck? Me and my team, we've had a big week, so just get the fuck out of the car. Damn. What do you win? Three fifty? I bet you a big Popeye chicken eating motherfucker, ain't you? And I remember, you know, with the funny, uh, with the guys, we were three punk kids in Miami. Okay, Will Smith, Martin Lawrence. <laughs> they didn't believe in the movie. All right, two black guys in the movie. They didn't believe in it because those movies when, don't work overseas. When you say they, you, you mean the studio. The studio. Okay. It's always they. The studio's they. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. In director speak, and when, when you go from commercials to movies, yeah. if you fail your first movie out, you're done. It's over. And you know, I, I followed Ridley's footsteps, Tony's footsteps, but yeah. they were older guys when they got into commercials. And now I was, I think, 26 or so. Hmm. And I did Bad Boys. The so studio didn't believe in the movie. The crew, they weren't allowing me to bring any of my crew. All right? I had my stunt coordinator. That's it. And everyone was like all these kind of, well, that's not going to cut. That's not going to cut. I'm like driving around. Stop the van. Stop the van. I want to do this shot. Well, we don't have time to do this shot. Stop the van. I want to do a circle track right here with Will and Martin rising up. It's going to be a trailer shot because I just saw this building and the yeah. light and I'm like, it's going to be a trailer shot. But Michael, we don't have the time. I want to do this shot. Boom. Look at your cameraman. He was Im trying to imitate that shot. Look how famous <laughs> that shot is, huh? <laughs> They're both very funny together. Mm. Okay. And, uh, uh, but with, but when it's not funny, I'm going, nah, that's not funny. Mm. That's not funny. A lot of directors would be more polite like that. I would just be like, nah, that's mm. not funny. But then when it would be funny, I would just start cracking up hysterically. Um, <laughs> Will's got some very funny imitations of me. Um, Michael Mann is uh, he's a he's a very real director. Uh, I know Michael. Uh, we were just talking on a DGA thing on a Zoom just uh, maybe three weeks ago. Um, it's interesting. I remember this because I was young when I saw this. The, just the gunfight, and uh, it's a longer movie than I remembered. I saw it before I did this movie. I think my movie Ambulance kind of kind of spices up the the heist movie a bit. You know, mm. it, it it still feels like that old movie making style, but with the got some it's got some different pizzazz to it. You know, yeah. Um, but I love Michael Mann as a director. He's fantastic. I would like to show you something. Yeah. Over there. Up. Another one effect. But can you pick this? Which this one? DVD. Oh, there we go. All right, so the true story, I mean, I'm, people have probably already heard it. I'm 15 and a half saving up for my first car. I remember I found the car I wanted. I had a summer job working at Lucasfilm. It was across from Universal Studios. I worked with this crazy guy who was a librarian. We were filing Star Wars stuff because Lucas was like, it was about as big as this room. Okay. Probably a little bigger. It had all the architectural drawings, pictures, photos. It was just, just the Sid B drawings. It was just amazing stuff, uh, uh, very detailed. And I had the job of filing, and I played on the softball team. I was a great baseball player when I was growing up. Okay, okay. I played in college. Okay, okay. So then I was so good. I was playing shortstop. It was the summer, whatever. They gave me an office. They gave me an office, and I remember walking by every day. By the, uh, they had one of the mechanical uh, Star Wars walkers. I think it was movie two, okay. Star Wars two. Yeah. Um, and it was so cool to see that model and just because Star Wars was a huge influence to me. I start getting the board, storyboards from London okay. from uh, Steven's movie. And I'm filing them, I'm filing them, and I'm, they're big boards, they're beautifully done. And um, I'm like, huh. and look at the title. And I'm like, I tell my 15 year old buddies, I said, yeah, Spielberg's doing this movie. It's called Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, I've seen the storyboards, it's gonna suck. Cut to, I'm um, 23. I've done a bunch of four. I've tried to do a bunch of commercials. My reel started getting around Hollywood, the yeah. studios. I got a call from this agent. Steven wants to meet you. I'm like, Steven who? Spielberg, 3.30. I'm like, fuck. 
drive over to Universal, go to his office. I walk in. He's sitting behind his desk, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is Steven Spielberg. Oh, my God, what am I going to say? I'm so nervous. <laughs> and I sit down, and I just start telling him. I said, listen, I'm with a kid. I filed your storyboards. I thought your movie was going to suck, okay? He started cracking up laughing, and I said, but I went with my parents, like, every Sunday, every other Sunday, we'd, we'd go to a big movie theater like yeah. we saw. Raiders of the Lost Ark at uh, Grauman's, uh, Grauman's uh, Chinese Cinema. And I'm like, I see this movie, and I'm like, oh my God, that's what I want to do. <laughs> so this man, my second movie, he was a director eater, okay? He was mean to directors. That was his, 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 uh, his game, yeah. all right? You want me to stand in a better light? I see you hitting the light thing, huh? <laughs> you know, you do a shot like that, huh? <laughs> I think you got the point. My very first piece of direction to him, okay, let me just give it to you, is The Rock. Do you have the movie The Rock? Where's The Rock? Well, Mac Torp, your pardon, John. <laughs> of course, I knew he would. So this movie, the very first scene, he's wearing his long wig in the uh, interrogation scene. And oh, I was scared out of my mind. I mean, I, I directed a lot of days in my life, you know? I was very confident with crew and setting up stuff, but there's Sean Connery. Hmm. And I'm like, Take one. Um, God, hey, Sean? Yes? Uh, can, can you say that less charming? Sure, boy. Sure, boy. <laughs> my, my name on the movie was Boy. Sure, boy. Now, he was a huge influence in my life. He was a dick, but a great one, meaning like he was tough on me. That day, I did, I, I used to be a magician, okay? okay? And I had a big, I had a big, uh, quarter that I got from a magic shop. Yeah. It's a size thing, okay? And I put a, a, a little rod in it mm -hmm. and to make a visual effect, because visual effects were not that sophisticated. I wanted something that can focus very close. I wanted the quarter to look huge in the frame. Okay. So remember the thing where the quarter falls off the table? Yeah. And he has to, you know, that's how he gets out. I'm down low. I remember I'm down low. I'm, I was like this. And he's I'm down really low and I'm trying to spin it to the camera that's right here. And I'm spinning it, you know, like it flipping off. And I just remember him looking at me and he had this grin on his face like, I like this boy, you know? <laughs> and, but he taught me so much about actors, rehearsal. I'll tell you one quick story, okay? He, he, he we were driving in the car chase because I would operate camera a lot. And he's in the big Humvee and he slammed the brakes because we we're going to launch and my head hit the wind, windshield. And I'm like, ah, Disney's here. They, Disney, studio's here. Why? And it's just, so they're here to kick my ass because I'm like two days over because we had fog, rain, mm. fog, rain, whatever, Alcatraz. And he goes, oh boy, you want me to help? And I'm like, o okay, <laughs> okay. So picture this scene. It was we rented out a, a, a like a like a like a third grade classroom. Yeah. Okay. So the desks are really small, it's like in the U. So the chairs are really small. So you look like you're giant sitting there. So the studio's sitting across the three of them. I had Jerry Bruckheimer right here. He brings in his tray. I bring in my tray. I said, Hey, Sean just wanted to say hello to you guys. Sean comes in. He puts his tray down and he goes. He sits down and we all look like giants sitting behind. It just looks so awkward. Okay. And he goes. This boy's doing a great job, and we need more fucking money. <laughs> he swear to God. And they go, okay, okay, sir, okay, okay. <laughs> and you did have more money. We got more money. Thanks to him. Yes, yeah. Well, I mean, we needed a few extra days. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, we are at the end of the interview. And oh, come on, let's do a few more. There is, like, some couple of movies here that you know well, I think. Okay. Uh, here's a fun one. Here's a fun one. Steven says, I'm going to show you uh, the 70 millimeter print of, of, of Lawrence of Arabia. And you know what? I had never seen it. Okay. And of, of all the movies I've seen, I've seen a lot of movies. I had never seen this movie. And so what, what, what age were you? I, was, uh, I had just finished Transformers 2. Okay. Okay. Or 3. It might be 3. I don't know. Okay. I had never seen it. And isn't that crazy? Um, or I might have seen it when I was very young, maybe I didn't understand it. 
He goes, I want to show you a 70 millimeter print. I'm like, oh my God. So he rented out a theater. There's a great little theater uh, in, in Los Angeles, a little one, uh, great print. And he's like, he goes, uh, Scorsese and I, we, we, we re-put some of the scenes that he cut out. Uh, we re-kind of, uh, we did it, put it in 70 millimeter. I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see it. So Shia LaBeouf is there. Okay, cool. uh, Steven is just the three of us. And uh, one of Steven's daughters. And um, it's fucking gorgeous. I mean, what an impactful movie, okay? But seeing it on 70 millimeter is amazing. And, you know, there was a funny moment where, first of all, Steven's like, we, we put this scene in because the, the studio had cut this out. And then we, then we put this scene in because the studio had, he cut that, <laughs> that scene out. And now when you see it, you understand why the studio had cut him out because it doesn't do anything for the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just made it longer, <laughs> all right? It didn't have a huge impact on the movie. But there was one funny moment where it's where the women are on the rocks, all right? It was shot in uh, 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 Wadi Ram, the desert in Jordan. And it's a hard desert to get to. It's beautiful. Uh, I've shot there. Ridley shot there. Uh, and there was a moment, Shai is sitting two seats down. There was a moment we saw one of the rocks. We had spent two days on that very rock, and we okay. had no idea. Literally, instantly, we, instantly, we both high-fived each other. <laughs> it was the same rock. Anyway, that was that was great. I remember taking a class on musicals with Janine Basinger, who's an amazing film scholar. Yeah. And um, uh, I'm thinking, oh, I'm in college. I'm in a fraternity, playing on the baseball team. I want to take a class on musicals, really. Loved it. Loved the class because <laughs> she's brilliant at teaching. Uh, um, and this was kind of the amalgamation of all of the end musicals, the MGM musicals, and all those, just the amazing camera moves. It was the mm. first time where sight, visual, sound, cutting, uh, was all just different. It was, a lot of movies were like this, 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 mm. and it, this was everything. I just thought this was an amazing movie. Um, haven't seen it in a very long time. So what else? What I, else? I, I've put speed because it, ambulance made me think of speed. This, this way of Well, interesting being... you picked this. Why? Because I was up for this movie. Okay. I wanted to do it so badly. Oh. I was brand new director, and you, you, you try to pick your first movie. Yeah. And this is the movie I wanted to do. My very first movie. And were you okay? When and I lost it to Jan Bon. And when you saw. And where's Jan's career now? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But this is a good movie. This is a good. <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke, Jan. Okay. This movie does have a lot of that speed thing in terms of the tension, and it keeps yeah. going and yeah. going. And that's, that's the whole idea of this ambulance movie. It was it about it was about tension. I've done enough action to left me last me a lifetime. Um, and my thing was just I like the claustrophobia, like like a like a das boat, you know. I wanted to put the audience what would happen if you were on an effed up crime, hmm. and you're seeing it from different perspectives, and 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 from a criminal's perspective, and from a hostage's perspective and how she's trying to manipulate them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, it was just an interesting study on tension. Mm -hmm. you know? When you, you saw Fast and Furious 9, for example, do you see your influence as a director in the new franchise, in the new blockbusters? I, I, I see, I have not seen this one, but I see, uh, uh, I see all the time. I mean, from yeah. the cutting style that I did on Bad Boys when I said I couldn't cut that fast, and now you see it. start looking at movies before that they weren't cut like that hmm. and I cut like that because I didn't have any money okay and uh, Cameron had just come out with and he was one of my heroes he came out with true lies and I'm like oh god look at all the money he had oh my god I got nothing we had nothing that, that Porsche was my Porsche by the way we couldn't even oh, get yeah. a Porsche so I had to rent it to the studio they screwed it up there was three thousand dollars worth of damage and they only gave me two thousand dollars of rental <laughs> Okay. And and I sold the car to my post supervisor, yeah. ch for cheap, and he sold it to somebody 
The thing sold at auction three weeks ago in America for 1.3 million bucks. Oh, shit. I lost out. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the whole idea is with action, I try to Im invent new stuff. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of cool drone sh stuff in this movie that you'll see stolen from now in mm. other movies. But there, are, there is a lot of CGI more in that movie than in yours. I don't really use CGI much. Yeah, that's why. I mean, not, like on Ambulance, there's very little CGI yeah. on it. It's all real crashes. The problem is it's a dying art for, for a, lot of, a lot of directors don't even know how to do the action. Mm. You know, I do all my own action. I don't have a second unit. I don't say go shoot a bunch of stuff. I'm the guy shooting it. So you enjoyed watching, I don't know, Man Must Fury Road from George Miller or Tenet from Christopher Nolan because there is no, not a lot of CGI. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I like real stuff that feels authentic. Um, and, and if you're using CGI, it, it needs to be, uh, it needs to be uh, realistic. I think the, yeah. the, the, the weakness to CGI when I did Pearl Harbor Uh, we were trying to do a, a movie that takes place in bright sunlight, and it was very hard. Mm. And I literally went to ILM, uh, and I would give dissertations on light. I literally would walk out. We'd walk out on a parking lot. So look at the light. Look at the cars. So, so we walk around, and you see how it all sparkles in different ways. And because people can tell, I love Point Break, by the way. Okay, that was a great movie right there in the middle there. Little hand says it's time to rock and roll. But people can, they all know light because they see it themselves and they know something's screwed up about it, you know? So mm. it's all about lighting. I've put Braveheart just behind you. I know this I, is a private joke in your Well, movie. it was, a, this was a huge inspiration even yeah. growing up. I'd like to see this again. Was, uh, I remember how effective it was when mm. I saw it with my parents. Um, but we all run out of time, don't we? Yeah. Uh, but this is a very fun store. You guys can be a little more inventive with your cameras next time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to buy the store. I said buy it. No, I want the whole store. I keep on calling you. Thank you.